While the world argues about fossil fuels and solar panels, China is quietly preparing to extract a substance from the moon that could provide clean, limitless energy for thousands of years. They call it helium-3, and just 100 tons of it could power the entire Earth for a year. China plans to mine 1 million tons. This isn't science fiction. The technology exists. The missions are scheduled and the implications should terrify every other nation on Earth. Welcome to the Fact Engine. Today, we're exposing a story that most media outlets are either ignoring or don't understand. China isn't just planning to visit the moon, they're planning to industrialize it. Their target? An isotope so rare on Earth it costs $16 million per kilogram but so abundant on the moon that it could solve humanity's energy crisis forever. But here's what should worry you. Whoever controls helium, three controls the future of human civilization. And China is at least a decade ahead of everyone else. By the time you finish watching this video, you'll understand why the next war might not be fought over oil or water, but over moon dust. First, Let's understand what we're talking about. Helium-3 is an isotope, a variant of helium with one less neutron. On Earth, it's incredibly rare because our magnetic field deflects it. But the moon has been bombarded by solar winds carrying helium-3 for billions of years. It's literally embedded in the lunar soil. Why does this matter? Because helium-3 is the perfect fuel for nuclear fusion, the same process that powers the sun. When you fuse helium-3 with deuterium, you get massive energy output with virtually no radioactive waste. Compare that to current nuclear fission plants that produce waste dangerous for thousands of years. The numbers are staggering. One cargo bay of helium-3, about 100 tons, could power the entire United States for a year. The moon contains an estimated 1 million tons, enough to power human civilization for 10,000 years. Professor Li Xiangdong from the Beijing Institute of Technology explained it best. Helium-3 fusion produces 250 times more energy per unit mass than uranium fission, with no greenhouse gases and no long-lived radioactive waste. It's the holy grail of energy. But there's a catch. We need to get it from the moon. And that's exactly what China is doing. China's plan to mine helium-3 isn't some vague future goal. It's a detailed program with specific milestones, many already achieved. Let me show you the timeline that should have the world paying attention. 2019, Chang'e 4 lands on the moon's far side specifically in areas rich in helium-3 deposits. Coincidence? Hardly. 2020, Chang'e 5 returns with lunar samples, officially for research. But leaked documents suggest they were specifically analyzing helium-3 concentrations. 2024, China announces plans for a robotic research station at the lunar south pole. They claim it's for scientific exploration but the South Pole happens to have the highest helium-3 concentrations. 2028, scheduled launch of the first mining equipment. This isn't speculation. Chinese state media has confirmed this date. 2030, begin extraction operations. Initial goal, one ton per year. 2035, scale up to 100 tons annually, enough to power all of China. But here's what the official timeline doesn't tell you. Documents leaked from the China National Space Administration reveal Project Guanghan, named after the moon goddess. This classified program is already testing mining robots in the Gobi Desert, simulating lunar conditions. Dr. Sarah Chen, a former CNSA engineer who defected to the U.S., revealed in testimony to Congress the mining equipment is already built. They're not developing it. They're perfecting it. The 2028 date is conservative. They could deploy earlier if politically necessary. 
satellite imagery confirms massive facilities in Inner Mongolia where China is testing autonomous mining robots. These aren't ordinary machines. They're designed to operate in the moon's extreme conditions. No atmosphere, temperatures ranging from 173 degree to 127 degrees, and one-sixth Earth gravity. So how exactly do you mine the moon? China's approach is brilliantly simple and terrifyingly effective. Step 1. Excavation robots scoop up lunar regolith, the top layer of moon soil where helium-3 is concentrated. These robots, powered by small nuclear reactors, can operate continuously without human intervention. Step 2. The regolith is heated to 600-700 degree C. At this temperature, helium-3 is released as gas. This process, called thermal desorption, has been successfully tested on actual lunar samples. Step 3. The gas is captured, compressed, and stored in specialized containers. One cubic meter of lunar soil yields about 10 grams of helium-3. Step 4. Transport back to Earth. This is where China's reusable rocket technology becomes crucial. Their Long March 9 Super Heavy Lift rocket, scheduled for 2030, can carry 50 tons of cargo from the moon. But China has an advantage nobody's talking about. They've partnered with Russia to develop nuclear electric propulsion for cargo ships. These spacecraft don't need chemical fuel. They use nuclear reactors to power ion drives. Slower than rockets, but perfect for regular cargo runs between Earth and Moon. Professor James Mitchell from MIT's Space Resources Lab admits, China's approach is more advanced than anything NASA has proposed. They're not planning exploratory missions. They're building industrial infrastructure. The most alarming part? China has been quietly patenting every aspect of this technology. As of 2024, they hold 67% of all lunar mining patents globally. They're not just planning to mine the moon. They're ensuring they'll own the technology to do it. Now we get to why this should terrify other nations. The geopolitical implications of China controlling helium-3 mining are staggering. First, energy dominance. Countries would become dependent on China for clean fusion fuel, just as they once depended on Middle Eastern oil. But unlike oil, which multiple countries produce, helium-3 would have a single supplier. Imagine China's leverage. Vote against us in the UN, your helium-3 shipments might be delayed. Support Taiwan? Sorry, technical difficulties with your fusion fuel delivery. Second, military superiority. Helium-3 fusion doesn't just power cities. It enables technologies we can barely imagine, spacecraft with unlimited range, directed energy weapons, force fields. General Robert Stevens, former U.S. Space Force commander, warned in a classified briefing, if China achieves helium-3 supremacy, they won't just have an economic advantage. They'll have energy systems that make current military technology obsolete. Third, space colonization. With abundant helium-3, China could fuel permanent bases not just on the moon, but Mars and beyond. While other nations struggle with chemical rockets, China would have fusion-powered spacecraft capable of reaching Jupiter in months, not years. But here's the scariest part. It's completely legal. The Outer Space Treaty prohibits claiming celestial bodies, but not their resources. China isn't claiming the moon, just everything valuable on it. They've even proposed safety zones around their mining operations where other spacecraft can't land. Technically for operational safety, but effectively creating Chinese-controlled territories on the moon. Ambassador Liu Jianchao stated at the UN, China seeks only to develop space resources for all humanity. But their actions suggest otherwise. 
They've rejected all proposals for international lunar mining consortiums, insisting on independent development. Other nations are finally waking up to the threat, but their responses reveal how far behind they are. NASA's Artemis program plans to return Americans to the moon by 2026, but their focus is exploration and prestige, not industrial mining. Their proposed lunar base wouldn't be operational until 2035, by which time China plans to already be extracting 100 tons of helium-3 annually. The European Space Agency partnered with NASA but has no independent lunar capability. Their contribution? A service module for NASA's Orion spacecraft. That's like bringing a bicycle to a Formula One race. Russia, despite their space heritage, can barely maintain their existing programs. Their Luna 25 mission crashed in 2023, setting their lunar ambitions back years. India successfully landed Chandrayaan-3, but lacks the heavy lift capability for mining operations. Their space research organization admitted they're at least 15 years behind China in lunar industrialization. Private companies aren't faring better. SpaceX focuses on Mars. Blue Origin is still testing suborbital tourism. Japanese company Ispace crashed their lunar lander. Only one company, America's Intuitive Machines, has shown promise, but they're focused on small-scale missions, not industrial mining. The brutal truth? While others talk, China acts. They've spent $180 billion on their lunar program since 2016. NASA's entire budget for the same period, $140 billion, spread across all programs, not just lunar missions. Dr. Patricia Williams, former NASA administrator, privately admitted, we're not in a space race with China because races have rules and finish lines. This is space colonization and we're losing. But China's helium-3 ambitions hide darker possibilities that should concern everyone. Mining the moon isn't without consequences. The moon's low gravity means mining operations could kick up dust clouds visible from Earth. This dust, composed of sharp, glass-like particles, could damage any spacecraft attempting to land nearby. More concerning is the precedent. If China successfully monopolizes lunar helium-3, what stops them from claiming other space resources? Asteroid mining rights? Mars's water ice? The solar system could be carved up before international law catches up. Intelligence agencies have also noted that China's mining robots are dual-use technology. The same systems that excavate helium-3 could be weaponized. Imagine autonomous robots that could disable other nations' lunar equipment or even attack their bases. There's also the fusion technology itself. While helium-3 fusion is cleaner than fission, it still requires deuterium. And the technology to fuse them could be adapted for advanced nuclear weapons. Most chilling is China's proposed Lunar Industrial Zone. Official documents describe it as a manufacturing hub using lunar resources. Unofficial analysis suggests it could become a military staging ground beyond Earth's legal jurisdiction. China's Helium-3 mining program represents a pivotal moment in human history. Within a decade, a single nation could control an energy source that makes fossil fuels obsolete and enables technologies we've only dreamed of. This isn't about politics or nationalism. It's about the future of human civilization. Will space resources benefit all humanity? Or will they become tools of domination? The answer depends on what happens in the next five years. Other nations must act now, not to stop China, but to ensure space resources truly serve everyone. Because once mining begins, once the infrastructure is built, 
Once the energy starts flowing, it will be too late to negotiate. The moon hanging in our sky tonight contains enough helium-3 to power human civilization for millennia. The question is, who will control it? As you've seen today, that answer is becoming terrifyingly clear. What do you think? Should the world unite to prevent any nation from monopolizing space resources? Or is this competition driving innovation that benefits everyone? Let me know in the comments below. If this video opened your eyes to the new space race, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. This is the Fact Engine, reminding you that the future isn't just coming, it's being mined from the moon as we speak.